Okay, so today I've been given some comments and I want to react on them, so let's jump straight in. I've got to figure out a method for calculating the purchasing power parity on the price increase versus what's lost to inflation. Okay, I'm going to be really straight and direct here. Why? Purchase and power parity is looking at a basket of goods in the UK versus elsewhere in the world. Don't buy abroad. One of the key things that we say is not to buy abroad because of exactly that. Inflation is different. Purchasing is different. Legalities are different. The conveyancing process is different. So I would say don't even look at it. You know, if we look at a couple of different things, let's look at these first of all. Inflation. So if we use metrics for US, France, Italy, Germany, and the UK. So this is us in the UK. Inflation is highest here. So if you're buying here and it's working pretty much it's going to work anywhere within the world but there's too many variables there so right now inflation is the highest in the uk followed by germany italy france and then us way down the bottom so when we look at purchasing power parity we're looking at apples and pears because you're comparing what's happening in the uk with what's happening in broad and that's only ever a concern if you're actually buying abroad so instead of focusing on that what i'm going to recommend is reverse engineering and we'll look at stacking a deal reverse engineering and in addition to that return on capital employed if you're going to be focusing on funds left into the property. Okay, let's look at purchase price versus inflation. It depends on how you're purchasing. My preferred method is to purchase cash and then raise a mortgage against it once you've added value to the property. Inflation as a property investor, when you have debt against your property in terms of mortgages, is a good thing because the high inflation that we're experiencing right now, or well, relative high inflation currently, you know, allegedly 7.3%, is eroding the value of that debt. Although the values of the properties are fluctuating, the debt owed is actually reducing in real terms because of inflation. So inflation is a good thing in your favor when you're utilizing debt, good debt mortgages. So if you're reverse engineering, let's look at the way in which to stack the deal. So the first thing you need to be looking at is the GDV, the gross development value, the end value. Now, if you look at what's happening within the market, we're hearing all of these, you know, quotes about a silent crash or, you know, big recession. And we are seeing price drops, but it's not dropping massively. So if you compare now with 2019's figures, it's pretty stable. So if we're looking at the GDV, what's it going to be worth in great condition when you've done what you need to do to the property, whether that's a refurb or renovation conversion. Most mortgages right now, you're going to be looking at 75%. So for argument's sake, and because I'm not great with numbers without a calculator in front of me, if it's £100,000 GDV end value, 75% loan to value, you've then got a budget of 75000 if you wanted to buy and refurbish and refinance all your money back out. Now, let's be honest, in today's market, you are going to be getting some bargains because people are struggling financially, motivated in terms of sales, and you can create those win-win situations. But if not, you then need to determine what figure you're happy to leave in that property. So if you're happy to leave £10,000, I look at that from the perspective of if you could buy a house for £10,000, I reckon most people, most property investors would do that. So then the figures that I believe you should be focusing on are the return on capital employed. So annual rental, less costs, like your management costs, your mortgage costs, and any insurances gives you your net return. Your net return per annum divided by the amount of money left in the property, the capital employed, as a percentage gives you a good return on capital employed figure. So if you're looking at it in real terms, you might be renting a property out for net £5,000 per year, and you've left in £10,000. So you're getting a great return on capital employed there, better than you're getting anywhere else. So I think they're the figures that you should be focusing on. Avoid the purchase and power parity, Let's not look at a basket of goods here versus a basket of goods elsewhere abroad. Let's look at comparing apples with apples. What return on capital employed are you getting? If you're getting all your money back out, return on capital employed is infinite. And inflation is actually your friend when you're leveraging mortgages or bridges because it's eroding the value of your debt. That's my thoughts on that one. I've heard that you should avoid auctions entirely apart from the ones that didn't sell in the auction. Okay, so for clarity, I've never bought at auction. I've bought pre-auction and post-auction because what happens at an auction quite often is that people will set themselves a budget and then they get all excited with the furore of what's going on, their arms moving up and they don't realise why or they get into a bidding war with someone and they're making daggers at them. People are going over budget and that's when deals don't stack. So for me personally, buying pre-auction and you're absolutely well within your rights to put your offers in pre-auction, sometimes if people are motivated, they'll take an offer pre-auction without putting through the auction. They don't want to go through the highs and lows and risk it not selling. They've got a figure in mind as a vendor of what they'd like to achieve. And if you're close to that, they might accept. Now, key points to note, you're still going to complete inside of 28 days. You've usually got to exchange with 10% there and then. So you've got to have your funding in place or you've got to have a solution to being able to buy that. You still have to pay the auction fees. So be really, really mindful who's paying the fees. It will say it in your contracts. Quite often, the buyer pays the vendor's fees. So bear that in mind. So before and after, yeah, you can get some great bargains after an auction because 
because sometimes they've not met the reserve because it's been unrealistic reserve or sometimes they've been just shy or for whatever reason the buyers weren't in the room at that point in time maybe the lot happened much later in the day so great deals can be bought pre and post auction that being said you can still buy at an auction but you've got to put your figures in place you've got to put your budget in place and you've got to stick to it what i would say there is the opposite side of it i buy portfolios and quite often there are a handful of properties within said portfolios that don't meet my requirements and the place i sell them is at auction why do I sell them at auction? Because people don't read the legal packs, so they never know what they're buying. And quite often they'll make uninformed decisions because they've got some funds. I put them into Liverpool auctions because I'm based in Liverpool and you'll have a Southern based investor for whom a property, you know, 100 or 200,000 is really cheap. So therefore they're buying those properties and then you have the whole bidding war and the excitement. So selling at auctions, personally, I think it works really, really well. Buying at an auction can absolutely work in your favor, but you've got to set your budget. But don't be afraid to put your offers in pre-auction and post-auction. It's all more than feasible when you know what you're doing. And so if you want to learn more from me, I'm more than happy to help. But we also have um, a really great opportunity for you to get information from someone who's been my mentor from the beginning, Mark Home, who's the co-founder of Progressive Property. So if you want to follow the link below, you will get access to a complimentary ebook which is the 42 top tips to property investing. So if you want more information, it's a great place for you to get it. Hit the notification bell, subscribe and like the posts and you'll be notified every time anything new comes up. So I've been Tony Gargan and I'll see you on the next one. Hey.